Hi, this is Yosif Xenogiannis and Manos Brilakis from the Minneapolis Heart Institute and the Cardiovascular Innovations Foundation, presenting case 89 for the Manual of Percutaneous Coronary Intervention. This is a case demonstrating off-label use of a peripheral drug-coated balloon for treating recurrent coronary instant restenosis. This was the angiogram of the patient. The patient has had multiple episodes of restenosis, has had multiple layers of stent into the LAD, a chronic total occlusion of the distal LAD for many years. But the most recent uh, PCI, balloon angioplasty and brachytherapy, was done a few months prior to the mid LAD, and the patient had already developed recurrent restenosis in that segment. The right coronary artery did not have any significant disease. So how to approach recurrent instant restenosis, which continues to be a challenging problem, even in the drug eluting stent era? The one key thing to do is to do intravascular imaging to ensure that there is no stent under expansion, because if that's the case, every effort should be made uh, with different balloons or uh, using a laser with contrast or even using lithotripsy, whatever can be done to expand the stent. Another option is the drug-coated balloons. However, these are not approved for coronary use in the United States as of 2020. Or the last option is to do brachytherapy, which had already happened in this patient. We did do intravascular ultrasound to confirm the mechanism of instant restenosis. And what we're seeing is that the stent is well expanded. However, there is a lot of new intima formed inside the stent. So this is an example of instant restenosis due to significant new intima formation. These parts of the stent were actually okay. So how to approach this? We first did um, some additional balloon angioplasty with a 3.5 millimeter NC balloon. And then uh, we decided to do an attempt to deliver a peripheral drug-coated balloon, given the failure of brachytherapy, into that coronary segment. To do that, we knew it was going to be challenging because these are high-profile devices. So we used a microcatheter, this is a Mamba Flex, to exchange the workhorse wire for a supportive 300 centimeter mailman guide wire. This was an 8 French EBU guide catheter. And then this is uh, the delivery of uh, the 4 by 40 impact admiral peripheral drug coated balloon. As you can see, this is a very bulky device. It's extremely challenging to advance it through the stent strut. But after a lot of effort, we were able to advance it during most of the portion of instant restenosis. The balloon was inflated for one minute. And this was the final result with improvement of the stenosis. This case does demonstrate um, several key lessons. The first one is that the instant restenosis that happens again and again can be a very challenging problem. The way to approach it is by ensuring accurate stent expansion with intravascular imaging. And then if it's the first episode of DES instant restenosis, typically a second DES is placed. If it's uh, multiple episodes of uh, restenosis, we don't want to create multiple metal layers. In those cases, uh, balloon angioplasty followed by brachytherapy is the most common course of action in the US, given the lack of drug-coated balloons. Bypass is another option. However, here there was no target zone due to standing of the entire vessel. This case shows that peripheral drug-coated balloons could potentially be used in large coronary vessels off-label for treating recurrent resistant instant restenosis. However, delivery is extremely challenging and will require strong support. Thank you.